opportunity to reach out and gain the souls of those people, the lost by the wayside.
whatever time we need to do it is right now. Amen. Amen. We don't want to put it off. We're looking forward to that. And then next Sunday, I would love it if the male chorus can sing for us at the Young Water Baptist Church. I don't know what, what, what y'all, all of y'all go when you all game and what time it's going to be. But however time it be, I need the male chorus to sing for us next Sunday, okay? At 2 p.m. Is that all right with you, Brother Tony? Well, but it's all right with Brother Tony, so we'll have a male chorus uh, down there on next Sunday at 2 o'clock at the Yellow Water Baptist Church. They're celebrating the church's uh, anniversary, and we're looking forward to seeing all of y'all's face in the place. It's right now, y'all know what Mother Bobby Nichols and Sister Rod who live there in Happy Wood. That's the Happy Wood Road. They'll go straight down Happy Wood Road and the church on the left hand side. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless you. So we look forward to seeing you. Thank God, brothers, for the devotional this morning, Brother uh, Benjamin, with our prayer and the word that we read. God bless all. Now let us come now and bless the Lord. And well, let me do this first before we do that. I have some, some, some Bibles here. And if you're here, they'll for you. Uh, Brother Grace from Nichols. That's my little boy. Amen. Amen. What is here?
but we have some great people out here doing some, doing some great teaching. So please bring them out if you can. On this afternoon at 2 p.m., the Nazarene Baptist Church in Woodhaven, Reverend Michael Jackson, pastor, will have their men and women's day program, and I will be speaking for them. So if you're not doing anything, you can just come out to Nazarene at 2 o'clock. May of course, the first will be tomorrow night at 7 p.m. And on next Sunday, we ask that everyone who can and will to pick out on next Sunday uh, for breast cancer awareness. And let us not forget the month of October is Past Appreciation Month. So we ask that everybody, if you can, just bring a donation on next Sunday for Past Appreciation Month. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Uh, we certainly want to reiterate the fact of our young folk make sure the parent, you are responsible for getting them here. Uh, so do all that you can to get them because we need to do all that we can for our young people. We can't say, well, they have a mom and a dad, so do you and I. <laughs> but we have folk to help us. And in fact, just last night, we celebrated our 54th uh, reunion, class reunion, and we were talking about how it was. We had the parent, then we had the teacher to help us out. But now, the parent are not helping and the teacher can't do it. Lord have mercy, they try, they can't do it. It, it starts all in the home, folks. So we're here to help you and for you to help us by bringing them out. Amen? Amen. And God bless you. Revival, I believe I announced earlier, and uh, for the male course, to be singing for us on next Sunday at 2 p.m. And I'm going to try to get some of our male course brothers to just come and be a part of the rehearsal on this con. That's tomorrow night, right? Yeah. At 6 o'clock, okay? Yeah. Right. 7 o'clock, all right. Come on, let's bless the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that man going to take down the committee there. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the correction. They're going to be the October the 29th, um, the last.
this day. I want you all to know you're in a mighty good place. Amen. 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 So you're in a mighty good word from the Lord on today, the 11th chapter of First Corinthians. The 11th chapter of First Corinthians. And we're going to start our reading at verse number 23. First Corinthians chapter 11. And uh, it's on the screen if you want to look that way or look down. He says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Yes. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. And after the same now also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, this cup of the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as oft as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread, drink this cup, you do show the law of death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so that he may eat of that bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are sick, many are weak, and many are sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged, but when we are judged, the chasten of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Father, thank you now for all your people, Lord, that will hear what you have to say uh, by and through us. We know God with you, all things are possible. Without you, God, nothing can be done. Everyone under the sound of my voice, if they are sick today, they may be strengthened. If they are weak, God, God, they can also have the divine strength. Bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to talk from this thought today. Remember him. Remember him. Thank you, uh, ushers, and thank all of you for your he ears to hear what the Lord has to say. Again, remember him. If we remember him, the Lord, we all know, will remember us. Yes, he will. That old song that the old church used to sing, and some of the older members can remember we used to sing the song, Remember Me. Yeah. And it was sung by them because they wanted the Lord Jesus to remember them. Yeah. They were saying, when I'm sick and can't get well, remember me. Yeah. When I've done the best I can, Lord, remember me. Yeah. And then this part, I know folks don't want to say this day, the Lord help me say, remember all my dying wrong. Lord, I need you to remember me. My dear people today, as we hear this message, this great day of the Lord, please remember him. And God knows he will remember us. Now come on today, a church, and say with me, come on, Lord. Remembering you because I need you to remember me. Lord have mercy. Remember him, folk. Now, let me say the church of the living God, there are only two ordinances. Now, others try to add to it, but it's only two ordinances that the Lord Jesus Christ left for the church of the living God to carry on till we come back again. And those two are baptism and the Lord's Supper. Now, understand me well, too, 
It is a law of something that's prescribed. In other words, we at the church of the living God, we are being prescribed by God's word, telling us what to they are. Now, the first again is the ordinance of baptism by immersion, not by sprinkling. If you've been sprinkled, you have not been baptized God's way. God's way is baptismal, and that means to immerse, to take you all the way under. That's why I tell everybody, you pretty much to come through it and get baptized by this, the Lord's servant. I said, you'll never get another bag like this. Okay? Because I want us to understand, you are going down because you have received the Lord Jesus Christ, and you are following him and what he did. You think Jesus would have went through all that trouble to go down in the Jordan River for John to get some water and just sprinkle on top of his head? Lord have mercy. And then, my folk, that is the Lord's Supper of what we would call communion. Uh -huh. Baptism is a symbolic act yes. that portrays what Jesus has done for the believer in salvation. Yes. Listen, folk, baptism is a picture of a person dying out to an old life of sin and being raised again to a new life in Jesus Christ. Baptism is an outward symbol of the inward work of God and the Holy Spirit. No wonder someone can say something down on the inside, working on the outside, that is the evidence of our salvation. The Lord's Supper, on the other hand, is also a symbolic act that it calls to mind the death, burial, resurrection, and the promised return of the Lord Jesus Christ. When we take the bread and the cup that we are remembering the day when Jesus died for our sins on the cross, was buried, rose again from the dead. The communion is a symbol of the eternal work God did through his son, Jesus Christ. This great day, we will do what Christians have been doing for over 2,000 years. We will remember Jesus for what he did, why he did it, and what it means for us. Since this is our communion together today, I want to take a, a little time here and share with you the truth about what the Lord's Supper is. We need to know what it is. You're doing something every third Sunday, and you need to know what it is. More than anything else, the Lord's Supper service is a time of remembrance. See, everybody wants to be remembered on their birthday, don't they? Lord have mercy. That's why Jesus said, this dude in remembrance of me, he wanted us to remember him. And that is the thought that I wish to magnify here today. Allow me to share three facts concerning the nature of the Lord's Supper as we think on the thought, remember him. Now in remembering him, first and foremost, it is a time of commemoration. Or a time of celebration. Okay? And then we want to also understand that it is what I'm trying to get you to see. It's a commemoration. And then secondly, it's a time of celebration. Yeah. Now, the word commemorate means to honor. Right. The memory of somebody or something in a ceremony. I'm here to remember you today, Lord. I hope you all are here today Amen. to remember him also. Amen. Amen. This serves as a memorial to him. If the Lord's Supper is anything, it is a memorial. It is a time to remember Jesus and what he did for us. Now, the following is what we commemorate today. We commemorate his suffering. 
Now notice verse 24 and 25. It talks about the broken body and blood of our Lord Jesus. Now both of these vivid phrases bring to mind both suffering and pain. When we take the elements of the Lord's Supper, the bread and the fruit of the vine, we are to remember that Jesus Christ suffered horribly for us to save us from our sin. Now folks, when I said he suffered horribly, there has never been another human to suffer like Jesus suffered. In Isaiah 52 and 14, he says, as many as were astonished at thee, his visage was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. No one had ever taken a beating, a beating like Jesus took. No one. And folks, he took a beating. Yes. You know, we really thought back in the day when our parents had an extension card. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that switch. <laughs> we really thought they put some hurt on us. Yeah. But folk, that was minute compared to what Jesus went through. Notice what I said again. Isaiah 52, 14. His visage was so long. That mean folk you couldn't recognize who he was. Your mom and dad still knew who you were when they got through it. Huh? But you couldn't recognize who Jesus was. They had messed him up so bad. So, folk, he needs to be remembered for what he did in suffering horribly for our sin. And then, folk, not only did he suffer at the hands of man who beat him like that, can you imagine? God let them beat his son like that. Lord help me, yes he did. And then my folk, not only did he suffer at the hands of man, but he suffered at the hands of God. Yes, yes. yes he did, at the hands of God. In Matthew's Gospel, uh, chapter 27, and in Luke's Gospel, chapter 15, it tells us Jesus was suffering so much, he cried out, Eloi, Eloi, the master of the night. He said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Yeah, uh, yeah, folk, he was really beat. Look, look what Isaiah 53, 10 said. He said, Lord, help me. He said, yeah, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Oh, help me, Lord. My friend, he had put him to grief. Yeah. Lord, yes, he did. And then verse 11, he the Lord shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. God! Okay. I had to hit it now like that Lord. God had to be satisfied yeah. in seeing his son beaten as he was. To suffer as he suffered. And he did all of that for us. So anybody go to hell, God knows he can't feel sorry for him. Because he did his part. So a lot of folks want you to do something, but they don't do nothing to show you they care. But the Lord showed us how much he really cared. Yes, he did. My dear brothers and sisters, the cross and all he suffered. We commemorate not only his suffering, but we commemorate his sacrifices. Now, the fact that Jesus Christ was in a human body it speaks of the sacrifices he made uh, to redeem us. God became a man. God lived and died in this world to redeem the lost. Now look, folks, God came down as a little baby. Wrapped in swaddling clothes. Laid in a man. In the beginning was the word. And the word was God. And the word was with God. In verse 14 of John 1, he said, And the word that was Jesus Christ became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and of truth. My dear people here today, the Lord Jesus Christ, he sacrificed his life. And then think about what Paul wrote in Philippians 2, 
5 and 8 when he said, let this mind be in you which is also in Christ Jesus. My friend who came in the form of a man and he suffered at the hands of man. And the Bible says he thought it not robbery to be equal with God, made of himself no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant. He took on the form of God and highly exalted him. And God had given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Oh, my friend, how much do I owe him? How much do you owe him? I know we say we owe it all, but we don't act like we owe it all. He suffered for it. To redeem the lost. He suffered shame. Yes, he did. Listen what they did. They passed by. The Bible said they reviled him and they wagged their head and likewise also the chief priests, the preachers. All right, all right, all right, all right. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, sir, yes, sir. The chief priests were the preachers. They passed by. And can I tell you, they mocked him with the scribes and the elders. Lord have mercy. My friend, because Christ also suffered for us leaving us an example, Lord have mercy, that we should follow his step. So when you're suffering shame for his name, you're going to be all right with him. Yeah. And then folks, he suffered shame, he suffered rejection, he suffered poverty. Yeah. Can you imagine a rich man becoming a poor man? Right, right. See, everybody had it. See, these rich folks want to stay rich. Y'all hear what I'm saying? They don't want to go back to being poor no more. But Jesus had all the riches. But yet the Bible said in 2 Corinthians 8 and 9 that he became poor that we might be rich. Lord have mercy. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In fact, my friend, the goal of giving himself as our sacrifice was his whole purpose in coming to this world in the first place. My friend, healing the sick was secondary. Right. Raising the dead by the Lord Jesus Christ was secondary. The lame folk walk, dumb folk talk. Lord, the mute being able to come about and same thing. All of that was secondary. What Jesus came primarily for was to seek and to save those which was lost. Yeah. That's why he came. And if you're lost today, he's talking to you. He said, I came for you. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Now, look, when you talk about big time, that makes you a real big time. The uh -huh. way he came down here for you. You mean to tell me he came you. down here for me? Thank you. Lord, help me. Don't you think that make you somebody? Yes, sir. Lord, have mercy. Thank he you. did that for me. He did that for you. He did that for the whole world. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. My dear folk, when the bread and the fruit of the vine are passed around, as some of you already have received in a little while, we need to stop to remember what Jesus did for us. Right. We are to commemorate his sufferings and his sacrifices for us. So then we remember him, folk. Then, secondly, we remember him is a time of Celebration. Now, just as much as the Lord's Supper is a commemoration, it is also a celebration. Okay? And then the word celebrate means to make a special occasion a day by ceremonies or festivities. Listen, folks, this word comes from a Latin word that means to attend a feast. Now, that is what we're here today for. We're here to attend the feast. We're here to celebrate what Jesus did for. How many of y'all want to celebrate with me? Huh? Yes, yes, yes. Now, you invited, and you were here. Thank you for being here. But I want you to know every third Sunday, in fact, every Sunday, I have a ball. Oh, help me, Lord. But here on this day, we come to have a bigger party yeah. because we 
we're here to celebrate what Jesus did for us on Calvary. And we don't want to take it lightly. I need some folks that say, preacher, I want to party with you.
But that is just what Jesus did, folks. He died and he conquered the grave. Then he do so because he could say in Revelation 1 18, he says, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I'm alive, what? Forevermore. And I have the keys of hell and of death. Thank God because he lives, all those who believe in him will live also. And we, my dear people, we celebrate his coming. We celebrate his compassion. We celebrate his conquest. We celebrate his coming. Now we're clearly told that when we observe the Lord's Supper, we're telling this world that we believe Jesus is coming again. That's what we're doing it for. We believe it. In verse 26. Now that is the Lord's promise to us. And then in St. John 14, 1 through 3, he said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house and many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But here's the part. Him coming again. He said, and I'm coming again to receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Isn't that good to know that he's coming again for us? And in Paul's letter to the church at Thessalonica, he said, the Lord himself. It's going to descend from heaven with a shout. With the trump of God, the dead in Christ are going to rise up first. And we that are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet them in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And then one more here today, my dear folk, in Revelation 22 and 20. The Lord said, surely I come quickly. Y'all heard him say, surely I come quickly. Yes, we've got to celebrate his coming because John said, Lord, I'm ready to celebrate right now because when John wrote this and when Jesus said, surely I come quickly, John said, even so. Come, Lord Jesus. Y'all heard what I'm saying? That's what he said. Lord Jesus. I know I told you that it is, my friend, a time of commemoration Secondly, a time of celebration. But thirdly, it is a time of contemplation. Do y'all get what I'm saying? A time of commemoration, a time, my friend, of celebration, and then there is a time of contemplation. Now, the Lord's Supper is a time, again, of the commemoration, of the celebration. But it's also a time here for contemplation because the word means to think about something. And think about it seriously. Yeah. And at length. Now, when I think of what Jesus suffered for me, Lord. it ought to make you and me too want to worship him. Yeah. When I think of all the things we are here to celebrate, I want to shout his praises. Yeah. But when I understand the messages, of verses 27 through 32, I understand that the Lord's Supper also is a very serious time. Yeah. It is a time for us to reflect upon the condition of our lives so that we can be sure we are where we need to be with the Lord yeah. before we participate in the partaking of the bread and of the fruit of the vine. My dear people, what I have always believed and practiced is that the Lord wants us to be in close fellowship with him. Yeah. In other words, everyone who is present here, you're invited to participate. But only after you have been warned of the consequences of partaking of the Lord's Supper in an unworthy manner. You want to do it in a worthy manner. And since neither you nor I know anyone's heart, each person is urged to practice self-examination. He says, so let a man examine himself. And then we can participate, Lord have mercy, if we choose. So in other words, only those who are in close communion with the Lord are encouraged to participate. 
So we're glad here to be here on today. But if you're lost, then you should let the bread and the cup pass you by. If you're lost now, I said if you're lost, if you have not accepted Christ in your life, you need to allow the bread and the cup to pass you by. You should want to come to Jesus. Get saved right now so that you can be worthy to participate in this grand celebration that we are a part of. And then, folks, we must contemplate our salvation. Contemplate our salvation. In verse 27, he said, there's a word in that verse that bothers me. And that word is unworthy. Now, we're told that if we take of this bread and this cup unworthy, we bring God's wrath upon our lives by not reverencing uh, the Lord's body. In fact, the phrase not discerning the Lord's body has the idea of treating Jesus like the mocking and jeering Jews did at his crucifixion. It means that we treat his broken body and his shed blood as if they were nothing. And whatever I do, whatever you do, we don't want to treat him like that. Because my friend, he tells us we got to examine our own life. He didn't tell me to come down there and examine. You take you to an inquiry to find out what you did last night or what you did before you got here or what you did last week. That's not my job to do that. He said, let a man examine him, say, so let him eat of the bread. We need to be sure, my dear friend, that, that we're clean before we come to his table. When we take up his table with an unclean heart, we need to be aware that there will be a price for us to pay. Now, what is the price? The Lord said, for this cause, many are weak, and many sick, and many sleep. Y'all get me? Many are weak, many are sick, and then he says, many are asleep. And the sleep he's talking about is not eight hours that all of us need every night. Lord have mercy. The sleep he's talking about is God have to take us out because we fail to reference him as we should. And oh my friend, may we hold fast to the fact of what the Lord is saying. What are we to do? What are we to do if we don't meet the satisfaction of partaking? Well, we are again to examine ourselves and bring our sins to the altar in confession and repentance. Now hear me well in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9. This is what the Lord tells me and tells you so we can partake of his bread and the fruit of the vine. He says, my friend, if we confess our sin, he the Lord is faithful. He the Lord is just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's what we ought to do. And when we do that, God will forgive us. Aren't you glad that he is a forgiving God? Aren't you glad that he don't hold things on us like other folks do? Some folks will never forget what you did 35 years ago. Amen. Amen. And you have asked him for forgiveness, but yet I still remember so much folks, you don't bring it up no more. Huh? It's over. It's over and it's done. It's a serious matter when we come before our God today. And I know my friend, in fact, it's so serious that I was said to all of us that if there's sin in our life, may we take care of it again before we partake of this fruit of the vine and of this bread. We're here again, my friend, to commemorate the Lord Jesus for what he did on Calvary. And, and we're here, my friend, to celebrate what he did for us children. Uh, and then finally, as you've heard us say, may we contemplate, may we take seriously what the Lord Jesus has done for us. I wonder, is there 
him. May we commemorate. May we celebrate. And may we contemplate what the Lord did. Father, thank you today. Thank you, Lord. You're so good. Thank you for your goodness. Your mercy. Bless us that heard you. And I pray today that some who say, I will accept that man. Name Jesus. And may they come today, Lord, with the idea of knowing that you are the best thing that ever happened to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. We invite you to come to Christ. Candidate for baptism by letter, by Christian experience. Will you be one today that will come? If you're seeking a church home, we invite you to come. Come, my friend. Jesus said, He that come to me, I'm going to go by.
cleanse them by your word. Yeah. And if there are any of us here today, God, that have not given over to you and your will and wave our lives, and that is, God, if we don't feel worthy, you said if we confess our sins, you're faithful. God, you're just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And God, we know you can do it even now. And bless all those under the sound of voice, every one of God. And keep us in your willing way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. On that night in the upper room at Jerusalem, the Lord implemented uh, the Lord's Supper all before the Jews celebrated the Passover meal. But the Lord Im implemented the Lord's Supper in the upper room. And, and on that night, he took the bread. And when he had broken the bread, they all began to eat. And that's what we will do. They ate up the bread in remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ. And after the eating of the bread, he took the cup. And then he sucked the same. This is the cup of the New Testament. Drank you all of it. And may we do likewise. God bless your heart and let us leave today and with the Lord Jesus on our minds. I woke up this morning with my mind on and let your mind stay on. On that night I was supper, they sang a hymn, they departed. God be with each of us until we meet again.